Right, you lot. In today's video, I am going to cover midfielders that have been signed under David Gold and David Sullivan. Try and assess where the money's gone. Have we got value for money? Um, and really, sort of looking at it is an area that's been possibly surplus. Possibly, there's too many players that we didn't need in there. So I'm going to cover it. 81.83 million pound has been spent, but we've recouped 34.39 million since. So what that tells me from the signs we made with the fullbacks is that this is an area that there's there's value in. And what was really interesting about some of the signings that they'd made were that they were all made surprise uh, on a free transfer in some cases, and they were able to recoup a lot of money for them. So I've got down here uh, Nordvite. Uh, Bought in for a free, sold for seven mil. You've got Fernandez was bought in for five mil, but sold for seven again. Kuarte was brought in for six, but sold for nine. So small profits around that three to six or seven range. So what that tells me is um, these players were bought with the potential to grow, like Kuarte, because he was brought in from Belgium. He was a very solid player. He was very versatile, and that's what fitted Sam Allardyce's side at the time. And then you've got the Nordvites, Fernandes, those type of players that were bought in on free transfers when we were trying to improve the squad depth. And obviously they were, the quality wasn't there, obviously Fernandes could have been given more time, Nordvite is another one as well. But they were low risk, um, high reward strategies. And I could get it if it was something that was implemented across the board. You know, We brought in players from the championship on five million pounds and then sold them for a high level fee of 25 or a 30 mil. But this really smacks, in terms of an investment, smacks of we don't want to prioritize money in those areas. Centre midfield really since Czech left has lacked legs and it's only since we've brought in Thomas Suchek with Declan Rice that we've had any kind of athleticism in there. And that's why West Ham were able to progress after Project Restart because we were able to compete with teams physically. So, for a strategy of investing in low quality players or players that are unproven, this area has always been a little bit of a, a problem area. We've addressed it, but notice how we addressed it. We've spent 18 million pounds on Thomas Suchek. So, when you spend money on quality players, you will improve in those areas, and West Ham definitely have. I did think it was interesting, this sort of looking at the money that we'd spent You've got even people in there like Mo Diame, um, Pedro Obiang, who were bought um, when we were at the bowling ground. Bought I mean, Diame coming in on a free, Obiang coming in for a few mil and sold for a profit. So it's a strategy that we tend to use with attacking players. Um, I'm not going to lie, I, I personally think it's a little bit archaic. And I, and I said in the other video, fullbacks are a massive part of the modern day game. I've just watched Alfonso Alves uh, destroy Semedo for Barcelona moving up and down that wing, providing assists, so no one can tell me that that's not an important element of the game now. Um, the centre midfield position, if we look at some of the bigger teams, uh, like a Liverpool, don't necessarily have the quality in there. I don't believe someone like a Henderson or a, a Wijnaldum are particularly world-class players, but what they've got is an engine. It has to be an engine room, and, and then you give the opportunity to support the defence, but equally give the ball um, to the attacking players who are going to be clinical. So it's an area that West Ham, in my opinion, have underinvested in. Obviously, in the last season, we've then gone and spent 25 million for nows and 18 million pounds on Thomas Suchek. For nows, for me, isn't a natural centre midfielder, so I can't put him in that bracket. I think in order for him to have that, he would, he'd have to be physically a lot stronger. Um, he'd have to be a little bit more box to box. For me, for nows doesn't have the same level of um, pace. He doesn't have the engine that I would expect a centre midfielder to have. When I listened to X's podcast the other day as well, it was interesting to hear him talk about players like Jeff Hendrick, who played for Burnley, he's on a free transfer, um, he's got an engine on him, he's got a good passing rage, he can get the occasional goal, he's physically quite good. I mean, you know, that is a strategy that the board like to employ with this area, so it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him coming at the end of the window if we were going to offer him um, a decent wage. My biggest concern would be if they're thinking about playing Hendrick at that number 10 position. Obviously, he's not creative enough for that. I know we're playing Noble there to sort of fill a gap um, and obviously just incorporate his leadership qualities into the team. But yeah, H Hendrix is a, is a different type of player, you know, and maybe as a backup, I've heard John Lundstrom's another one, versatile on a free transfer. 
So these are the types of players we're looking at. So don't be surprised if we go and buy a player on a free transfer that's got decent resale value. And by all means, you know, I, I don't personally believe there's a huge strategy here. I think from what I've seen in terms of the spend on even the defensive positions um, and the centre midfield positions, there is a real emphasis on scrimping and saving and trying to find a bargain in these areas and using a lot of the outlay in the attacking areas. Again, I say it for the billionth time, it's an archaic way of running a football club and having a sort of recruitment strategy. And if we had a, a more balanced recruitment strategy with the scouting department um, and a director of football, we'd be identifying areas and investing properly in those long term. And we would reap the benefits of that. And I think, yes, there's an argument that where we've spent a lot of money in the wing positions, you know, we haven't done as well as we would have liked to. But you have to be, you've got to be, you've got to have your football head on in that sense. And you've got to say, you know, we saw Felipe Anderson last season struggle because he had to do so many defensive responsibilities for Aaron Creswell. Now, if you put Enrico Henry and slotted him into left back, I wonder what would happen with someone like Anderson. Would he get forward more? Would he be able to contribute? I believe he would. And then the worst case scenario, the worst case scenario is you see him and he pl still plays the same and you say, listen, his attitude's not there. And we've got a clear cut decision on whether we want the player or not. But in this team, it'll always be difficult because there are always, you know, gaps to fill and it's always kind of a building process. So, you know, for the midfield position, you know, if they did get Lundstrom in or they did get, you know, Jeff Hendricks in, then maybe that would be a positive solution, at least for having squad depth and at least for having players the Premier League quality um, and have a resale value that we could maybe reinvest in the future. So that was my take on West Ham's investment in the midfield or the centre midfield positions at least. I'm going to look at the strikers, the one we know. We know that, I mean, I've seen the little glimpse of it. The outlay on the strikers is unbelievable. The return is even worse. So I will cover it. Um, and obviously until next time, take care.